Well, hello, boys and girls. It's when we feel like at o'clock. I'm Pearl of Wisdom, and you're listening to my NHL Pearls of Wisdom coming to you live again from the Seattle apartment on this lovely Seattle night. See, it never gets dark in Seattle in my apartment. It's always light all the time. That's the bonus of having it. <laughs> anyway, so you're gonna, um, this is uh, Steel Flyers over here. Everybody knows that, right? www.steelflyers.com, the best sports network page in the land. My Thanks for having me, bro. Yes. Oh, I'm having you. Well, you're always one part. Well, it's all the time now. Am I even <laughs> having you guys anymore? Or just we are. <laughs> yeah, which is, yeah, there you go. All right. Pro Joe. Joe, also from yeah. Steel Flyers, www.steelflyers. Mm-hmm. And from Sports Fanatic News on the YouTube. You can go on there. And Flyers Nitty Gritty writes for one of the finest, if not the finest, in the land, in the area of all of those things. We, my friends, have been doing a series, and we've all been excited for this. You might have noticed or possibly realized with uh, watching us that we are maybe be Philadelphia Flyers fans, possibly. Uh, <laughs> looking at, I, I don't know what would give it away. No, I don't know. And I am also a Philadelphia Flyers fan, and we're doing a series on all the teams, what they did in the offseason, and how that projects for their future. And guess what? It's time for the Flyers. So we're into it. Very excited about it. Um, The Philadelphia Flyers this year, um, I didn't make a lot of moves outside of the organization, but made a lot of interesting moves within the organization. And that said a lot about the organization, I would say, and what they're going to do uh, for their future and where they're going to go. Coming off a uh, disappointing loss to the Islanders that I think everybody thinks that the Philadelphia Flyers had the ability to win. Everybody here would agree here. What do you? I'm going to start with. Okay, let's go with the what with the one move that, the one move significant move. And correct me if I'm wrong that they did make, um, bringing in Gustafsson after a very significant move happened where Niskanen retired. And I'm going to start with Steele here. What do you think of that move and how that projects for the Philadelphia Flyers? Uh, honestly, uh, this is a head scratcher for me. Um, I I don't understand why Chuck Fletcher went out and got Ghost 2.0. Um, the same age, the same game. He doesn't turn the puck over quite as much. Um, he has a, a little bit more, less of a defensive upside than Ghost. So I, I fail to see what, why this player was even signed. Because to me, this was a big, giant waste of $3 million. <laughs> Just uh, don't, don't, don't try to sugarcoat it or anything. Uh, why? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, think about it. If we would have saved that money, okay, and not spent that money on Gustafson, okay, we could have potentially been in the running for some of the other bigger names. Yeah. Because we had quite a lot of money on the books once um, Niskanen retired. You know what I mean? So, I mean, there was definitely a plethora of money available that we could have gone out and tried to to get somebody. But I think with, with Chuck Fletcher pulling the trigger on Braun right away after the announcement of of the uh, – Niskan in retirement, and that was another three million dollars. It just whew, went see ya, took a powder. Oh, so that's six million dollars on two players. How much ice time do you think them two players are going to see this year? Seriously, I don't know. I don't know, Joe. How much ice time do you think those players are going to see this year? One of them a lot. It will depend who emerges as the better defenseman as time goes on because one of them will probably stay in the starting lineup. Um, for most of the season, if not the whole season. Um, I think Ghost and Gustafson are kind of the same, except Gustafson, the track record Ghost has of showing some defensive abilities at the very beginning of his career and in college. You might be able to argue the SHL and then showing it in 41 games in your rookie season is better than college and then the first couple years of your career. So... Um, and then in his 60 point season, he was all right. Um, but th- that was his best overall season, obviously. 
I think if I had to pick which one has more of a defensive upside at this point, unless if Ghost's knees are back to the way they were, it would probably be Gustafson because he hasn't had two bad knee surgeries. Okay. So, like, that's a, uh, I think he has more mobility still, unless if Ghost is exactly back. We saw him having more mobility last year when he came back, but it's not like we yeah. saw him to the level of the Ghost at the beginning Ooh. of his career in the first three. So, like, yeah, but we only saw him for Gustafson, like two games where Gustafson, um, played 59 games still last year and put up 26 points. I mean, that's not great, but it's not terrible in a very down year where ghosts very down years have been riddled with a lot of injuries recently uh where his biggest question is one can he stay on the ice and two when he does how consistent is he going to be um not just in his own zone but uh, also offensively now so yeah, that's exactly. a, that's a big uh key as well where gustafson if you can continuously get at least 27 points that should play maybe better defense in AV system. That to me, that's a big if. Notch above Ghost because Ghost is also a big if. I like Ghost too, but I think at this point they picked them up because nobody thought Ghost was going to be here. I don't think Fletcher thought Ghost would still be here either. So I, I think the biggest thing was they picked up Gustafson thinking Ghost would have been gone by now. Yeah, but why? Even though. Even though Ghost was still on the team, why would they still do that after they had just re-signed Braun? Well, because I mean, it would be cheaper for Gustafsson than Ghost. You no, know, I understand that. No, I understand stuff. that. I get it. But no, there's nobody knocking on the door here for Ghost. Nobody. Okay? So if there's nobody knocking on the door, why are you trying to bring somebody in for just-in-case purposes? Look, we already know that Ghost is probably not going to be protected – in the expansion draft, and it looks like probably Gustafson is probably not going to be protected either. Well, he'll be a free agent anyway because you only well, signed. No, he's not. Okay, he's not for one. Okay, no, he's not for one. Uh, okay, no okay. All right. yeah. but see, I, I really think that I, I'm a fan of the guys that are currently on the team. I, uh, I really did like the fact that Chuck Fletcher was able to not necessarily go out and get the big name, but was able to re-sign all of the players that he needed to re-sign. Haig was re-signed. Philip Myers just recently got re-signed. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. Those two players, I think, were huge um, additions to the Flyers. Also, Nolan Patrick accepting his um, his uh, wow, extension wow, offer. Dude. Yeah, you know what I mean? So that right there, the, those are going to be some key cogs moving forward for the Flyers. Yeah, I think the big thing with Ghost is when you sign a guy for one year, I don't typically consider a one-year deal too big of a risk. And I think it's if you couldn't trade Ghost, what are you going to do if he doesn't do anything? You're going to have no offense other than from the top half of your defense. Do you really want your bottom half to just be Hag and Braun all I'll year even, without I'll even have go any further ability to move that. it up the ice a lot? Like, I think it's more... We need depth of puck moving defenseman if Ghost really doesn't come back the way maybe they, if in the other way, to, they think maybe he can come back. But if that doesn't happen, they don't want to be screwed and have to completely rely on Zamulas of the world or maybe a Hoberg or somebody coming up earlier than they anticipated it to make a bigger impact. I'll even go further than that and say that the signing of Gustafson, because they did struggle with their power play quite a bit in the playoffs, especially with creativity, without a Gustafson type in the lineup. The signing of Gustafson to me tells me that the coach has very little faith in Ghost. Very little faith at all. So he's saying, look, I doubt it very, very much. I'll be playing Ghost and we need a power play specialist. So they went. I'm not sure if that's it, though, because AV would always put him on the power play. And like they brought this up on the one Flyers podcast I listened to when Ghost played, AV kind of overplayed him. Yeah, he because in a lot of situations. he was giving him every he was giving him every chance that he could possibly get. Yeah, but you can't play him like that. 
play people you don't like. That's my point. Like, yeah. Brandon well, Manning was overplayed because a guy had a crush on him for no reason. Uh, I don't we're think, not going to mention that. I don't guy think was. they didn't like him. They were really <laughs> hoping. I think he was really hoping he would snap out of it, and he was giving him every opportunity to to drop the ball completely. And I think he dropped the ball completely, and they don't want to take another chance. That's what I think. Okay, if that's the case, then, okay, here's what I don't understand. And help, please help me understand this. I don't understand why Chuck Fletcher saw the need to sign Gustafson and also to sign Braun. I know Niskanen retiring was a huge hole that opened up in the Flyers' top defensive pairing. I understand that. But if they already were thinking about bringing Phil Myers or even Friedman as the next coming, then why did you go out and pack a, another hole or fill another hole in the lineup that, that to me, did not need to be filled? Uh, yeah, well, I, I, I actually I kind of agree. I actually kind of agree with you. He's one point eight million. That's yeah. not cheap. In a calf world, that's not cheap. I agree with Steele on this one. I don't. I don't get it either. I don't get the resigning. Yeah, one point eight million is not really that much. In the, the it's that, not. It, it's, it's really not. It is when you can fill it in with a million dollars. When you only have. A handful of a million dollars to spend. Yeah, but we have to remember the Flyers don't have another defenseman, especially right-handed, that does anything like Braun. All their right-handed defensemen are do go-getters like Myers that try to do everything. Um, they're, or they're more just simplistic like a poor man's Niskanen like a Friedman. They're not guys that are going to block shots and pound you against the boards. Do you know what it looks like to me? It looks like to me that sometimes they're going to be playing Gustafson and sometimes they're going to be playing Braun. It looks looks like that they're going to use Gustafson against certain teams and Braun against other teams. And my point being here is that is a pretty expensive – like I agree with Steele. That is a pretty expensive amount of change. You're – you're putting into part-time players. Those are players that, especially when we're looking down the road here, there's going to be guys falling off the freaking waiver wire that'll probably be a lot cheaper that could fill that role. I'm with Steele on this one. Yeah, look, here, here's the other thing, too. Okay, the fact of the matter is, is this. When you have a very little bit amount of money and you decide to sp- – we're spending – Oh gosh, what is it? Three million for for Gustafson. What's what's Braun's contract? One eight. It, what's that? One eight. One point eight. One point eight. Two years yet. Right. Okay. And what's and Ghost is at four point two five. Four point five. Yeah. Okay. And, so and Hag that's is one point six for two years. Right. Yeah. Okay. So but I'm not worried about Hag, but I'm worried about. Gustafson, Ghost, and Braun, those three players right there, that is a lot of bloody money. Yeah, but you also need a veteran defenseman. You can't have a bunch of inexperienced. I agree with you. Well, I that's agree the with other you. Side of that equation. When this retired, the Flyers already had a guy that knew their system's been here. Uh, when we got him, he actually played. I think it's more recency bias because Braun played after having a bad start to the season, a very good second half of the regular season, and then showed some struggle periods in the partial okay. playoff where if you just took the second half of his regular season and he continues to play like that, that's why I say $1.8 million is not really that much. Okay, if, but- if, he does, if, he's, uh, if he platoons really well, it also won't be that much because Gus is only a one-year contract. And Braun is obviously not going to be protected either uh, for his 1.8. They're not going to take him, but you're not going to protect him. So that gives you a guy that they're going to leave exposed as well. Um, so I think it's just you wanted to have veteran. You wanted to have another guy that was rough and can actually block shots and you knew would be consistent at that. All right, no, I'm with you. I get you. I get you. I get you. But here's my thing. It's time for Provorov to take that lead role now. Yeah. Yeah, but you don't want Provorov blocking as many shots as Justin Braun and Robert Hay. 
Uh, okay, because, well, because, evil, because you're trying to have Provorov stay healthy as okay, I get it. Yes, okay, but what what kind of game does Provorov have? Yeah, he everybody. sacrifices his body. He puts himself yeah. out there. Oh, he does, but he also does everything. That's why you try to have defensemen on your team that don't do everything and just do the one thing you want them to do, which is exactly what Justin Braun. I, I don't it. think. And I don't think Rock getting Agnes. Justin Braun changes how many shots Proverov blocks at all. Not I at agree. All. <laughs> Not at all. I agree, and I think. Anything about and how and many I shots think. And I think Braun's re-signing or signing was a knee-jerk reaction because of I exactly think. what you said, Joe, because they they felt the need to have that veteran presence back there on the blue line. And that's to me, that was their knee-jerk reaction was getting Braun. I disagree with that signing 110 million percent. He didn't play bad, though. Braun didn't uh, play bad. Okay. He's just, he's just a replaceable asset is what we're saying. He's replaceable. Exactly. At a cheaper price. Exactly. With a much That's, better younger player. Yeah, but player. the Flyers don't do that. The Flyers value a team. We They've talked about it since Hextall's been here. It's not rocket science. They value a team of building a culture. If you replace people for less money, none of them know your team. So if you well, went I out and you. got Slater, Co- Koku, or somebody like that, none of them know you. They have no familiarity with the team. They might not gel with the team as much. You already know you have somebody yeah. that fits in really well with the team. I think it's just the way the Flyers run, and they don't really care how people think of how they spend one point eight million dollars. I'm with. I mean, or look. trying to build a team that we know has each other's back as much off the ice as they do on, which is a big key to winning as well. So. Okay, but we saw players brought in. For that specific role last year, and Braun okay. was one. And but but our players were still run at. Our players were still hurt, and and nothing. There was no repercussions at all. None. Nothing. Well, you didn't bring in. Fu- the difference is though, you brought in guys that bring more physicality. There's a difference between bringing in guys that bring more physicality and bringing in Ryan Reeves. Like, that's not the same thing. You're bringing in, if you bring in a Ryan Reeves or a Tom Wilson, you're bringing in guys with more physicality that will also beat the crap out of somebody. Then why'd they but bring Justin Nate Thompson Braun, in? Justin Braun. Nate Thompson, Thompson yeah. Used to Grant, be that. Grant. Grant. Grant really is a guy that should have done that more. But Thompson, at the age he was at, you shouldn't have expected him to be dropping the gloves with the best of them anymore. But, but what Grant's did Braun. the only guy that you might have actually picked up that you thought might do it more. But even then, he never was the guy that would stack up fighting minutes uh, with the Ducks. He would just be playing more yeah, physical games. But, but he so. never – he skated – they skated away. They all skated away. It wasn't didn't, wasn't That's Braun. why if the Flyers could have got a Matt Morton, if they were able to get somebody like him, that would have been a big pickup for them because he's a guy that's a good fourth liner that will beat the crap out of anybody. That's what uh, the – the Flyers need somebody – they they got physicality. They didn't get the guys that will – stick it out like Barkley Goodrow is a big reason Tampa got that because he'll stick it out for you if they go up against one of the stars. So then if instead of difference there instead of getting Braun you could still do that though for two point whatever they have left in um I'm just saying I look I'm just saying I disagree. I think that we could have got one of those type of players uh, like a Radko Gudis type player. Yeah, I would take Gudis over Braun all day. All freaking day. I don't all know. Day. I, I all day. See, that's I, I think when it comes right down to it, is the difference here is we I do not think Braun is as good as a defenseman as you do. Uh, I think he's very I overrated. Agree. Yeah, that's that's Gudis really what it comes great. down to is he's not a good defenseman anymore. Gudis is best that's it. was with us. Yeah, I know that still... Matt, he's been one of the worst penalty minutes defensemen every season. He takes some of the dumbest penalties in the Who, game. Gudis? Yeah, that's it. Yeah, oh, yeah. But, I mean, but I mean, they're, they're, they're the, the same the age. Play. They're the same age. They're the same money. They're kind of doing the same thing on each respective team. Gudis is doing it now yeah, for but Florida. I consider Gudis to be the guy, like I was saying, the Flyers. You have guys that just know how to play the game smart now on this team, too, it seems. Racco Gudis was not that. They, the Flyers seem to be trying to build a team of – I think that's why um, they love Mark Friedman so much because he's nothing special. He just plays the game the way you want. He takes what's given to him. That's what 
they saw from Sanheim when they picked them and were developed. Yeah, yeah. He makes some dumb turnovers still, but that's what young defensemen do. Usually, though, he doesn't try to overcomplicate things. Provy, obviously, it was like that. So I think yeah. they like having those players where Gudis didn't really fit into that click. Yeah, no, I understand. That, that's more where Braun uh, fits more into that click. Koku just had his like last good first good season last year. I think they just wanted someone they know that they that they can connect with already. I think that's well, a big thing. I'm with them. Steele on this one. They didn't want to risk not getting a defenseman. He was there. They had an offer from another organization for 1.8, probably somewhere around there. And they said, instead of risking not getting another defenseman, we're going to grab him right now. And it's just a question of you think if you think that's a good they, And I understand, Joe, you're saying, uh, you know, better to go with the evil you know than the evil you don't. I get you that he knows the people and all that stuff like that in culture. But for me, Braun had a horrible playoffs. Horrible playoffs. And to give him a $1.8 million for two years, I would rather roll the dice and get a Slater Cuckoo or something like that that could give uh, give another roll on it. I understand the culture thing, but I don't think the culture is all that great if you had a horrible playoffs. And now you're giving – I'm not sure the precedent is very good there. Yeah, and they also right took there. away they also took away a roster spot too from a Zamula from a potential Friedman, from a Sam Moran, from a – I mean, you know, look, I get it. Sam Moran coming off second ACL, yeah, yeah, yeah. But what if this is the year that he's able to come in and be healthy and, and do exactly what he's supposed to do? And well, then and then everything that we said right now about Braun goes out the window because I, Braun's well, sitting on the sidelines now. Or as mm-hmm. Zamora does. Well, yeah, it's true. I mean, I think the Flyers just – like having a lot of depth and the veteran depth at that as well, which is why we saw them get the Thompson, like you said, why they did that to get the uh, grants of the world. So if they fail, you just go back to the bottom is you just go back to the cost. Like you have guys that, you know, have been there before. And then if they don't succeed, you're just going to go back to the other guys. I hope hope that uh, that's what I think it's kind of at, at this point where, um, I think next year and years after or more when the Flyers will look to get more creative with going out for uh, bigger guys, especially if uh, JVR comes back and has a very productive year this year, that would be key because then he would actually be tradable. So if you want to get rid of that contract, then yeah. that and becomes expensive. So. Here's the other thing, too, and this is another reason why – look, I understand what you're saying, Joe, and I'm with you, my man. I do, I do agree – that I see what the Flyers are trying to do. I disagree with what they're doing and how they're doing it. Because when you look at what's going to happen next year with this flat cap that's going to be the same, and now you're going to have um, Carter is going to come up for a contract. And and if and if, if the Flyers can't re-sign Carter, then oh, – they will. They then, will. Then, then, but, but you get where I'm going with this, right? So now the following year, now you got G and Coots are now up. For contracts, okay, yeah. and now that that year is going to be the first year where we might actually see a raise in the salary cap, okay. So if you're spending up all this money now on guys like Braun and Thompson and Grant, and and then when when guys like Moran come in and, and guys that and Friedman are able to come in from the your team that you already have. Now what are you gonna do? Now that money's already spent now. Now what? Now you're sitting in a hole now because you don't have that money that you should have saved this year. Now you don't have that money to go towards now you gotta release somebody because you gotta sign Carter Hart. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, that should, I be, think that should be interesting. Uh, yeah, for sure. I think they're going to figure it out. I think Raffle is teetering towards the end of his Flyers career this year, or probably this year, honestly, because oh, he's in the wow. final year of, of his contract. Yeah. Um, you have Lawton that everyone's been calling for in trades. Maybe if someone else emerges as a forward this year, Gosh, I uh, his trade value is going to, or his, uh, market value is going to go up. I don't know if the Flyers are going to want to pay him if he asks for high threes or more, which uh, if he has another good start like he did last year to this year, he probably could 
ask for, uh, then he would actually maybe be mentioned more in trades if a guy like um, Steve mentioned before the podcast, a Roops off a Maxime Shushko, yeah. Yeah. a um, Kase, uh, Matthew Strom's not ready yet, but a uh, yeah. guy like Tanner Lazinski, um, people like that uh, come, come up and actually do well, Linus Sandine. So, like, yeah. that would be a uh, thing to see, but. I just think this team is more like Fletcher said, building from within, and they don't want to mess with guys too much where you might have gave Braun 1.8, but I think they just are really comfortable with him. And it's basically, I don't think he's blocking anybody because if somebody's doing really well, nobody has any problem getting rid of Justin Braun from the starting lineup, I don't think. So I think that's the same with Okay, Gus. I, I'm, with you. Really well. I'm with you. I'm with And nobody has any problems trying to put him on waivers. Because okay. they're probably, one, not going to get picked. He's not going to get and, picked and, up. And, two, if they do, it's not that big of a deal. So I think it's more oh. just depth to start because if you put them on waivers and they go down, then you're still – your cap's not at the NHL level. If they get picked up, then great. You, you're not – you don't really need them anymore anyway because the Mueller or somebody else emerged a Friedman to play really well. So I think – they have more flexibility than we think because they're not going to mind putting certain guys on waivers. They probably won't mind if Ghost starts bad putting him on waivers either to send down to free well, up the space. So, well, you know, here's the thing, too. A little bit of space, not much. Yeah, but that's the other no, thing, too. A bit of space on the roster for a rookie right. contract. That's I, I have a hard time paying players to sit in the press box. That's really what it comes down to. To me, one point eight uh, million. I don't pay the players. It's not me. It's not my money. I know what I, you mean, but one point eight million for two years to a guy that probably will end up in the press box. I really think he likely will. Uh, that's what I why I agree with you here, Steele. You could have got that for cheaper. We can find press box skaters for cheaper than that. That's what it comes down to for me. Uh, I, I I but I also see. Joe's side of it too, where the Flyers are like, okay, we know this guy, and the Flyers are like, okay, we understand, we we know what he's bringing to the table, and, and and everything like that, and I get it, and he does bring that veteran presence and all that other stuff, but I just don't think he's worth it. No, I, I don't just think so. don't think he was worth it. That's all. That's just my we'll, opinion. We'll find out when the season starts. Yeah, but how about we got to get into now. We got a couple minutes here, and we we could, you know, it's Philadelphia Flyers. We could sit here all day. People would not even be able to eat supper listening to us still talking about Philadelphia Flyers. <laughs> but uh, actually, just period, really. Supper? Really you don't need no to, supper. <laughs> or whatever they're doing, get sleep or anything. Oh, uh, sleep. So the future. Now, we just hacked up the Philadelphia Flyers like crazy. But let's face it, they got a strong roster. I know you don't believe we like the Flyers. Yeah, right. right. It doesn't sound like we do, huh? But actually, <laughs> this team is stacked. And yeah. uh, we're hard on them because that's what Philly fans do. But uh, Joe, more or less than others. But, okay, what is the future? What is this, this season with these moves – where are the Philadelphia Flyers in this sort of, they don't really know what the division is, but you kind of have yeah, an idea yeah. of what the di division is. It looks, <laughs> it looks pretty stacked. Well, I'm going to go to, uh, I'm going to go with Joe first. What is your prediction? Early, early, early prediction of the Philadelphia Flyers in the regular season against the Washingtons, against uh, the New York Rangers, against all of these teams that appear to be going Pittsburgh Penguins in this division. What do you what do you think is yeah. what's your early for them? I think uh, a big thing when you're going to really compete is obviously your goaltending, and other than Pittsburgh has the biggest question mark there coming in out of our potential division. Um, they, um, I think, have one of the best, obviously, in Carter Hart. Uh, the Islanders might have the potential colder winner. We still need to see it at the NHL from the KHL. Usually that translates. Uh, and then they have a good mix of veterans and youngsters. It, it also depends, obviously, Patrick coming back and not even making, a obviously, a great second-round pick level. But you don't expect that when a guy first comes back, but just a impact. Uh, would be huge. We know Lindblom's coming back now. He's probably going to perform really well, I think, probably on the second line. And then you got Lawton, that really is a great bottom six guy. Raffle for what could be the last year here, but still a good bottom six guy. Knack developed as a very good bottom six guy. And Farabee, who's a good, really top six guy, but could be on your third line as well. So you have flexibility there. 
I think the big thing with the Flyers, because he's the most skilled out of all of them, is if Morgan Frost can actually, if if Patrick's not ready, yeah. show up at the start of the season and be on your second or third line. Because yeah. if he's able to do such, he has the most scoring touch, the most offensive playmaking gift ability between the Rubsoffs, the Shushkos, the Strom, uh, the Sandines, the Kase. Like, he has more of that pizzazz to his game than any yeah. of them, where that's a big thing for me, because Rupsoff, like Bunneman, those guys are more bottom six guys uh, that play a really good competitive game, but not with the offensive honus of a guy like Frost. So if he can step up early, he can then potentially become a winger that would bump somebody else out later when a Patrick comes back. I think that's a big factor for their offense to have more offense on all three lines. Cause I think if that's the case, Frost could be your third line center to start assuming he actually gains some weight and bulks up a little bit this <laughs> season as well. Uh, he would be, he's skilled enough to play against any third liners more. Can he just consistently play defense on the third line, which we'll see more coming into this next season. Will he have worked on that enough? in the offseason, is he committed enough on defense? That's the big question yeah. with him. Will he commit enough to defense to be able to be a third-line type center? Because you can't just be good. You can get away sometimes on the first and second line just being offensive. You can't get away playing on a third-line defense role just being offensive, unless if you're the best third-line def- center <laughs> since sliced bread and we just <laughs> have other two guys playing good in front of you and we can't move you up. Like, that's the only way you can do that. So, yeah, Frost needs to show out more defensively. But if he can do that, then, yeah, we'll be one of the better offensive teams early. And even with the re-signings of some of these guys, I think our defense is still good because Provorov, Sanheim, Myers, Hag, I really do like those four. And if we add in a Friedman, I really like Friedman when he came up. Because anybody that just knows how to keep it simple and not be stupid even in their first couple NHL games – that's a very good testament to me because mm-hmm. somehow you know how to slow down the game when you haven't even been here before. Yeah. So that's a very good thing I like seeing. Um, where some of our best defensemen, like Myers when he first came up, didn't even have that ability, and he's one of the best defensemen on our team. Freeman first came in and just has the ability to be, you know, a good third-line defenseman. I don't yeah. know if he'll develop more beyond that, but he could be a good 5-6 and you need to have those on your teams. Amula probably can develop into a top four. So I think they're set, and obviously they have a great goaltender, which is really what it comes down to, especially in a season like this, that you're going to be playing a quick-run schedule in a wacky division. So So what do you think, top three in the division, for sure? Yeah, yeah, I think they could definitely be top three if everything falls into place, like I said, especially if Patrick comes back sooner rather than later they definitely have a real good chance of being top three potentially one of the top two if patrick comes back and is able to get that 35 ish points that some people haven't projected at coming back and actually making an impact so all right still what do you got what do you think um gosh man what he said okay cool thanks no 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 no. uh look i really feel that um I think the Flyers' defense is stacked. I think the Flyers' offense has enough skill and enough talent to be a top three team in the league, no matter what league we're in or division or whatever the case is. Okay? I think there's been some head-scratcher moments that's happened this little past off season here. Some of the re-signings I have uh, some questions with because um, I have a hard time paying players – I'm, I don't like seeing the Flyers paying players that sit uh, in the press box. I do feel that with the emergence of Nolan Patrick being a difference maker, I think that's the key. If he is not able to go, I think Frost will be able to step in and handle the, the situation and not have any issues and not see too much of a drop off. Cause I think he'll be that he'll be able to step into that role. If Nolan Patrick is not able to go right off. Okay, I really like um, some of the combinations 
uh, w- w- that with Joel Faraby, with TK, with Coots, with G, uh, with Lynn Blum. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to see that kid start playing again. That right there. If Lynn Blum, oh, look, we know Lynn Blum's going to come back. That kid right there is a difference maker, in my opinion. Okay. When he went down last year, he had over 30 points. Okay, he had he was he had what eleven or twelve goals, and he only played like thirty games, something crazy like that, right? So uh, seeing him play a full season, that to me is a difference maker. Nolan Patrick comes back, that to me is a difference maker. We've seen his skill, we've seen how good Nolan Patrick can be when he's on his game. We've seen it. Okay, if he's on the ice, that's a difference maker. Okay, I also feel that uh, we're gonna see the emergence of our defense more so this year now because there's going to be more of those guys filling those roles. Okay. I really do see, That's true. I really do see that. I also see something else too, that we haven't even touched on when and if the season does start. Okay. Cause right now, tentatively we're looking at January 13th. Yeah. 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 Okay. They're going to try to put 56 games in from now until – or from Jan, January 13th until what, the end of July? Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. That's an average of four games a week, boys. Yep. That's a lot of games. That's no practice. That's no time off. That's no winter classic, no all-star break, no, uh, no bye week, no Christmas break, no nothing. Okay? Yep. That's straight through 56 games. Yep. They have to expand the rosters. With the expanded rosters, okay, you're going to see guys like Zamula. You're going to see guys that are going to, you know, that might be those fringe guys because, look, they're, the Flyers are going to have to keep some guys back as a kind of a reserve COVID list. That's what this whole res- that's what this whole expanded roster thing is going to be mm-hmm. because you start, you start traveling around and you, we've seen it. Football players, the NFL, uh, we baseball, saw it with, yeah. with baseball. We saw, you know, when, when players start traveling around, they start getting exposed and they start getting sick. And once they're sick and they can't play, then they need to have somebody come in. Mm-hmm. So you're going to have to expand the rosters to allow for them to have a couple of guys like those black aces sitting back waiting that are going to have to be quarantined. It's going to stink for them. Because they're not going to be able to do much. You're going to have to quarantine like everybody else and whatever, whatever. But you're going to have to do that in order to maintain this, in my opinion. So that, to me, is going to expand the rosters uh, to a much more greater extent. To where you might see Lyon play a game or two. To where you might see some of these guys come in. Kase. You you might start seeing uh, uh, Terensky. You might start seeing some of these guys. Zamula playing more. Friedman playing more. You know what I mean? If Nolan Patrick is back, cool, you might still see Frost. You know what I mean? So I really think the Flyers are going to be a really tough team to contend with. Now that we've had a full off season, we're going to come back with a nice camp, hopefully some kind of camp. And I think that with the fact that we haven't made a lot of moves outside of the Flyers organization, that's going to bode well because camp's going to be short. There, there might not be any preseason games. And teams that have had a lot of turnover are going to have a lot of chemistry issues at least the first month of the season. The Flyers aren't going to have that issue because everybody that they re-signed were basically people from their own team. So everybody knows everybody. Everybody's already played with everybody for a while with the exception of Gustafson. You know what I mean? So I think that's going to be an advantage for any of the teams that didn't have like a lot of turnover over this offseason. Yeah, even in the coaching staff as well, they haven't had a lot of turnover. I think the whole quarantine thing for if they have a taxi squad, which obviously they should, um, is not going to be as big of a deal because the AHL season is starting the second of February, and there's not like they're going to be allowed. Oh, they to, are okay. It's I not didn't like they're going to be allowed to go clubbing. Okay. In, yeah. No. Uh, okay. Yeah. Their, uh, <laughs> okay. I'm going to have to cut you off here because we're getting long. AHL. I'll give you my quick one here. I think the Philadelphia Flyers will likely be first or second in the division, uh, and the main reason why is I think, like you do, I, I agree with you that the teams that have changed a lot, like the Montreal Canadiens, for instance, who won't be in their division, but still, teams like that that 
they did a lot of changes, it will it probably will be a disadvantage for them. But I will do for the same reason as it's always been with me, and you guys all know this. I will scream his name until he gets his first Vesna, Carter Hart. Carter Hart this year is going to be absolutely insane. Would I'm not down. be surprised at all if he wins it this year. It's going to be the year of the goaltenders. I love this kid. I think he's going to rock it, and I think they're going to. He's going to bring us to first. Anyways, uh, not that I'm a homer or anything, but. <laughs> <laughs> But you uh, <laughs> this is our full 42, which is actually about 42. It's almost oh, wow, 42. Cool. So uh, thanks, Steel. Thanks, Joe. You guys know who they are. Steel Flyers, www.steelflyers. Go check it out. We've got uh, a lot of announcements coming up on who might be on this site. It is going to be amazing. Just blow your mind. I'm not kidding you. Steel Flyers, you're not going to let you down. We're not going to let you down here. It's going to be an incredible website. Go check it out now. It's building and building and building. And thank you for listening to this fine programming. Thanks, you guys, of course, for being here. Not like you weren't going to be there anyways. That's the Flyers. That's us. Full 42. Have a great day, everybody. Lots of love to you.